Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Endogenesis by David Go. It is for two to five players, takes about 15 to 30 minutes to play, and it's for ages 13 and up. In the game Endogenesis, you're going to be playing as a cosmic spirit in an alien universe. You and your companions are going to be blessed with the uh, differences and cursed with individuality at the same time, and because of this, you're going to be wanting to learn and gather knowledge and power and resources, all at the same time clashing against each other in a type of battle royale. They're going to be competing against each other in fighting different spirits and or monsters from different realms in the universe, and whoever is able to secure the most victory points at the end of the game is the winner, while at the same time creating a tableau of different abilities and usages and ultimate abilities to combat against each other and against the monsters. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at it. Here is Endogenesis and all the components you're going to be getting with it. There is a board, there are four different decks of cards here. You're going to get the Realm of Knowledge, the Realm of Chaos, uh, the Classes, and then of course the realm of wonder you're also going to get uh three of these guys here they're little crystals and five cards from the realm of knowledge here everybody's going to get five so in a three-player game give everybody five of these cards and then you're going to give everybody a health card that's going to track health so this player here is going to start at three it has a max health and it also has the health it's he's currently at so everybody's going to get that as well as the ability to go ahead and place down the cards that you want. So in your hand, you're gonna have different abilities here as well as potentially an ultimate. If you play three basic skills down, you can play an ultimate as well. If you don't have an ultimate, you don't play it, but you can choose which ones you want to play down. So I'll go ahead and play this one here. And then of course I can play this one here. And, oh, there's an ultimate, sorry. This one here. This one, and since I played three, I can go ahead and play this ultimate here. Each of the cards is going to have an ability, as well as the upgraded abilities based on the crystals that they have played. Uh, if they want to, somebody's going to have these little three crystals here. Oh, boo, boo, boo. And then that is the basic idea of setup. After everybody is done putting down the cards they, they choose to put down, remember if the card has a shield on it, it's going to be put down face down. And if it is an artifact, it can be actually just used. This is an ultimate, so we can't use that. These are all artifacts, so we can simply play this one here. It's the Bow of Artemis. And uh, this player over here, we'll go ahead and select some stuff here. Here's an ultimate siphon, so we can play all three of these guys here. And then you can play this one here. Okay, and this one will go into his hand. Now with these special crystals here, before you start the game, you get to choose. You can spend them to increase your max health and your health. So if he wanted to, he could spend this one crystal and move his max health and health to four. He could also choose to put these guys next to the cards here, which represents their upgrades. So in this, in, in, in this instance right here, it says if you upgrade it by one crystal, it's going to increase your uh, damage to two and restored health to two. And in this case, if you have two crystals, it'll increase your damage to three. Otherwise, you can just choose to, if you want, sacrifice all these and move your health along the track. Whenever you go to these locations here, you're going to simply use a, uh, you're gonna simply get one of these guys here, which is a Realm of Wonder, and you can choose to play it. These Realm of Wonder cards are very powerful and they'll give you some special ability. They're basically like artifacts. You can simply play them and do their ability. This one says you can discard your entire hand and for each card you discard, draw a card and restore it to health. That's a very powerful card for this player to have. And of course, these players might choose if they want to simply um, upgrade their cards, putting two here, maybe a max health here. And this player here, maybe he just simply wants to put all of his upgrades on different cards here that can increase the power of the cards. Uh, the next thing you're going to do is look at this Realm of Chaos deck and simply flip it over into the discard pile and do what it says. This is a distortion. Distortions, when they're played here, they're going to go up here until the effect happens. This one says the next player to kill a player is going to gain one of these uh, powers here and um, uh, from the victim if they have one, and then it ends and this goes to the discard pile if another player is killed. Of course, when this is empty, another one is going to be flipped over, and this is an event. It says all players are going to gain one of these guys here, so every single player would gain one of these to, to use for either upgrading their health or powering up their cards. Uh, and then after that, another one is going to get flipped over. Oh, a scary bad guy. This is a legendary El Diablo. Uh, of course, on this one here, it tells you your rewards if you beat them. It's active ability. It's uh, passives, along with uh, Mercy. Mercy is pretty simple. It says if anybody is, if everybody is below 10 max HP, this guy is not going to be a thing you're going to need to fight because it's too scary. And so another card would be flipped over. And you have Frotic Yokto, which is basically no, no Mercy on here. So it's going to have an initiative, deals two damage to each player. And then active uh, which is it deals damage to each player equal to their missing health okay so now you're going to look at the health of the character the bad guy and you're going to put it down along with its max health and its current health and after that that is going to signify the beginning of the game and you're going to choose a player to go and start the game up 
So now the game's ready to go. Now, of course, what I, did, I told you about was initiative. Whenever a monster comes out, that means uh, the initiative is going to do whatever it does. So this does do two damage to all players. And it has true strikes. So everybody's going to take two damage as soon as he pops out. And then players are going to go. Each per player on their turn is going to simply draw two cards from the Realm of Knowledge. And then they can choose that they want to replace cards they have on the field. Uh, and they could use these cards to, by discarding them for their power value to uh, save store up energy and to use their spells that they already have currently. And when they put out new cards, you can't use those cards the first time they're put out. You can only use one card ability per turn, so you can't use it multiple times. And you can also choose to use artifacts, or you can choose to use your Realm of Wonder cards. You're also able to, if you gain uh, maybe spell, or you gain, gain, gain crystals, you can use those for max health. You can also use those to upgrade your skills and attack monsters. When you attack monsters, you just choose the ability, choose the player or a monster, and then reduce their health total down. If the monster dies, you're going to get rewards. If a player dies, you're going to get rewards, and then you're going to pass turn. The next player is going to draw two cards and continue this way until the end of the round, which every player has taken their turn. Once every player has taken their turn, the monster is going to act. This specific monster here says it has an active ability that does damage equal to uh, players and their total missing health. So if everybody has one missing health, it's going to do one damage to everybody. A very scary monster. That monster will stay on the field doing that every round until it is destroyed, and then a new monster is going to come out from the realm of chaos. Now, of course, the monster might not come out. Instead, maybe one of these distortions is going to come out or an event might come out and you're gonna have to do those first until a new monster pops out once that happens the game is going to continue so those can be like kind of like segues in, into the next aspect of the game and it's going to continue from there once a player receives three of these victory tokens here they're like little crystals little rainbow crystals here they're going to win the game you're also able to play ultimate abilities once you've got three cards down in the field and of course there is a deck of classes and these class cards are able to be taken from provided you have all of the colors of a certain type so if you have all of the Deuce X cards, you're going to take this Deuce X Machina ultimate ability or class ability. Uh, or if you have one of each type, you could choose this formless one and it lets you permanently copy a class of your choice, inheriting its bonuses. And then you're going to continue playing until somebody gets those three points. That's the basic idea of the game. Let's go ahead and take a little look at a couple turns of how to play the game and how it functions. Back to the Endogenesis board, as you guys can see, I went ahead and set it up so you can see all the board. This is one player, here's another player here, and here's a final player. And everybody has taken their two damage, their max health and their two damage they have taken. Because of the initiative here, deals two damage to each player. And uh, so everybody's got those damages taken. You got your hand of cards here, and this player is going to start. Now the upgrades are listed below the cards here, so you can see them, which will power up those cards when you choose to use them. We'll start with this player here to go first, so he's going to take two cards from the Realm of Knowledge, and here are the cards he has in his hand. He can choose to discard to gain two for each card he discards, uh, which could be useful, but he's only getting two, two health, so we're going to save that for later. He's also got these abilities here, which he can go ahead and switch these uh, for these guys here if he wants. Now, when you switch one, though, you're not going to be able to use that ability, whereas he can use these abilities to start the game with, so he may or may not want to do that. This is a special ability which comes face down and can be flipped over for this specific uh, cost here. These are the costs of the card to use the abilities here, and these right down here are the bonuses. So right now, he can also choose if he wants to, to discard these cards. These cards are basically power, the top right-hand corner, and that signifies the cost to play these cards here. So if he wants, he might want to use, I don't know, Siphon, right? It's going to cost him three, so he could discard these two cards for four, and he'll be able to do two damage and draw a card if the target you're attacking is a player. So he can choose to either do two damage to the monster here or two damage to a player, and if he does, he can draw a card by hitting a player. It's pretty useful, right? Over here, he's got a transfusion. It deals one damage to all enemies, restores one health for each target successfully damaged, and this says it does two damage and restores two. That's pretty useful, right? So maybe he'll do that. Uh, he's going to go ahead and spend these two cards. That'll cost four for his three right there. He's got his upgrade there, which means it's going to give him an additional bonuses here. So, uh, okay, damage equals two. So everybody's going to take two damage, including the monster here and his opponents as well. Um, oh, and that really hurts too. Bam. That's going to knock him out, and that will also knock him out. Now, when players get knocked out, they're basically going to be frozen for a turn, and they're not going to be able to, they're only going to be able to um, draw their cards. So it can kind of like slow them down specifically. But then after that, they're going to go like this, and on their, their next turn, they're going to be able to come back into the game with their full max health. Now, let's say he didn't want to do that, of course. So I just wanted to show you how what would happen if he actually attacked like that. Maybe instead of doing that, he discards his two cards, 
cards, and he does this, deal two damage and draw a card if it's a player. So he'll just do two damage to the monster here, make it nice and easy for you guys to understand. And after he's done doing that, he can spend any of his tokens here. The tokens that are under here is representing of what he can use for his max health or for his um, abilities here. Maybe he wants to put this here to increase the amount of damage and the restored health, or he can simply uh, choose to save it if he wants to. I think he'll go ahead and spend this on a max health. That'll push him like that and push this like that. If this hits over here, he'll get into the wonder card, which is pretty useful. The next player over here is going to draw cards. He'll draw us two cards, and then he's going to let's show you what his hand is. He's got all kinds of stuff here. Um, oh, okay, well, he can play this card if he wants down. He can choose to play... Uh, no, this is an ultimate, so he can't play that. Dang, he can play this one, though. He's got two ultimates. They can't be played, but he can use them for their power cost, which is pretty good. And he's got glyphs. This is says he can gain one little swirly thing if he wants and draw a card. This one here says the glyph of ascension. If all of his cards are the same type or different types, he can choose a class card, play this card, and put the class down. And they have specifically specific ultimate abilities here. And then this one's choose a skill cast, gain one, plus one additional for each revealed equipped uh, skill of the chosen class. These are basically power. So this is a pretty useful card. You can go ahead and play this card. It'll give him a power to use his ability here, and he'll be able to draw another card. And this says, okay, let's, let's say it does. Do one damage. Uh, uh, if at least one damage connects target is marked. Pretty useful here, so he'll push that on there. And there's different abilities like marked and first strike. I'm not going to really explain those. You can look them up in the rules if you'd like, but they do different effects on the monsters and whatnot. Um, so he's played that card. Uh, he's got another one right here he can play. This is gain two power and restore two health. He'll do that. He's going to gain his two health here. He got he gained his two power, but he just played this card, so he can't actually use it, unfortunately, because he just played this. So the power is going to fizzle. Any extra power you get at the end of the round is going to be gone. It's going to disappear. Here. So maybe he'll choose to save these cards for the next turn if he wants. The next player is going to get to go, and you can see that he's got a lot of stuff down. He's going to get to draw his two cards here, and he gets to simply look at all the cards in his hand. He's got that Glyph of Ascension for his class if he needs to. Uh, these are all different, so he could actually do one of the classes if he wanted to. Um, the Specifically the Formless one. He's got Deep Roots here. He can go ahead and switch this for this one if he wants. When you switch, you get to keep the power-ups too, which is pretty nice. Um, but he's going to just save these, and he's going to use these for an ability of some sort. Let's go ahead and discard these two for three and use meter storm it deals a total of six damage spread over any number of enemies the max damage per target is three so he could do one two and three damage to this guy and he can do one two and three damage to this guy if he wants remember this distortion says whenever the next player is killed by another player that player gets to steal one of these from the victim, and then this card will get removed. But mainly the majority of what they're trying to do is destroy uh, these guys here. Now, these are what you need to win, and these are the symbols to win the game, so once you get three of them. So the only problem with this is if nobody has one of these symbols, killing a player is not going to really benefit you, right? It's not going to help you as much. It will basically end their turn, which is useful if you're playing, in a t uh, if you're playing only a three-player game, because that's one less person you have to worry about. But at the same time, killing these monsters is very, very important. Uh, after he's done playing his cards uh, and playing whatever he wants to do, he's going to end his turn, and then the active monster is going to do something. It says, do damage to each player equal to their missing health. This player has a lot of health missing, so he's going to simply die, and this player won't take any damage, and this player will actually take two damage as well, so he's going to fall over as well. And so that's the basic idea of the game. It'll, go, it'll come around again, the players are going to refresh their health after they've lost their turn, after drawing their cards, and the game is going to continue. Once this guy is killed, the player who kills them is going to gain a, one of those, three of these, and then he'll get to draw an additional card. That's pretty useful. And then another thing is going to pop out. Ooh, distortion! If this is not in play, this one's going to pop up. And it'll, it says when the next monster dies, it, is, it deals five true strike damage to its killer. Ooh, that's nasty. Another one of these will pop out. Here's a, oh, here's Probus, which will then look at the max health of five here. And it says, reaction, attacker discards a card. So whenever he gets attacked, the player attacks him, discards a card. And then a death cry. Each player draws a card into their hand and takes damage equal to its power value. So he doesn't actually have an active ability. But as soon as somebody kills him, that's what's going to happen. This guy doesn't give you any bonus uh, victory points, but he does give you bonus crystals and cards, which will let you power up your skills and abilities. And he'll stay there until he dies. And once he dies, it'll rinse and repeat the process, right? That's the basic idea. There's a bunch of wonder cards, which we'll talk about above and how powerful they are as well as the class cards, but that is, for the most part, how to play the game Endogenesis. So before we get into it, let's talk about a couple caveats, and the first thing is reactions. Whenever something ha whenever you, something happens to you, you can choose to pop a reaction, like Blessing of Hermes, gain four, uh, gain four armor and protection against being stunned and marked, you spend three on, an, on another player's turn when they're attacking you, flip this over and do what it says, this card will go back to your hand, and then you can choose any card in your hand to place face down. You could choose this one again, though, if you want, in case somebody wants to attack you again, it can prevent you from taking damage and whatnot, uh, so it could be 
be useful that way, but you don't have to, right? Which is nice. You get the option of doing that. Also, and whenever a boss reacts to you, if you hit it four times in your turn, it's only going to react that one time per turn per player. So it's not going to hit you four times if you hit it four times. Also, another thing I kind of messed up on was distortion. Distortion, you can just have as many as you want. I wasn't sure if you could discard them or if you discarded one when it came into play or if it simply stayed. It's going to stay until the, um, the, the end if. Uh, quote may, uh, happens. So if a player is killed by another player, this one will go away. Or ends if a monster dies, it'll go away as well. So they kind of stay on the field and they get scarier. The realm of Mon the realm of wonders is going to be given to you as you hit certain goals on your health track. There's these three here, and as you hit them, you're going to be able to draw from this deck here. Smite instantly destroy a monster and receive its rewards, but you don't get any victory points if there are any. Shuffle the monster back into the realm of chaos. Lazarus, when you uh, receive fatal damage, you're instead restored to full health and you do five damage to your attacker. These are super strong cards. Do Diablo, choose a player who's equipped skill. That player discards that skill and takes two damage. Nice, just especially if they're trying to get their class ability, now they're not going to get it for a while. Disarm, target player discards a card, return the wonder uh, to hand. If there are any with uh, three or more cards, use once per turn. For, uh, wow, super good, super, super good. So there's a lot of great cards in here, but you're only going to get to get three of them per game, so you have to be aware of that. The Realm of Chaos, there's tons of monsters in here, there's tons of distortions, they all do different things. Sometimes you're going to get events that are going to be good, sometimes you're going to get events that are going to be bad. A lot of monsters that are scary are going to have mercy, and they're going to say, oh, if a player has if no player has at least eight health this monster is going to go away or if no player has 10 health so on and so forth so once the game starts getting up there in health players are gonna have to start fighting some scarier monsters like a legendary edgen din, din eh. i can't say these names at all i do three damage to all players with more than eight health wow it's so good this one doesn't even have a mercy so that's scary but that's that's the idea right uh, there's also like i said before you're gonna need to have certain cards in order to pull off certain events or effects like a glyph of ascension in order to get your class ability the shields are going to be face down and all the rest of the cards can be switched around and swapped around but whenever you play a card you simply cannot use its ability until the next turn uh killing monsters is going to give you those effects and getting these three victory points is the winning aspect of the game so that's the basic idea of it uh what do i think about this game well first of all this game's awesome it's so cool i really like the stylization of the cards i like the artwork of the cards it's kind of got a iconish style and it well has this like really weird like Cos cosmic feel as well. Uh, what can suck though, really, is dying. Basically, I'll lose a turn. I still, that's one. Uh one mechanic I do not really enjoy in a lot of games, uh, but this one doesn't really hurt you that much. It's not going to, it's just going to slow you down, right? You're not going to suffer any real penalty other than just not getting to take that extra turn. So dying, you can prevent it too. If you want the beginning of the game, instead of powering up your abilities to be very offensive, you can choose to be defensive and give yourself like an increased amount of health, which can prevent you from dying. So you have that option to kind of avoid that, but you're not going to be as powerful later in the game. But that doesn't necessarily matter because all you need to do is score these points by either doing it from the distortions or doing it from the monsters. The monsters are cool. The cards are cool. I like the fact that you can make new classes, you can power them up, and uh, you can you have ultimate abilities that are all super powerful. The Realm of Wonders are even more powerful cards. So everything you feel like you're doing is going to be very, very good, very, very strong. You feel like you're increasing yourself as you progress throughout the game, and you do feel like you're having opponents. This is a competitive game, but it can be cooperative at times because realistically there are some monsters that can kill all of you, and you have to work together to destroy them, otherwise you're all going to be in trouble. You're basically cosmic beings, and you feel like that because you're like trying to figure out what type of monster, what type of being you are, all while at the same time is learning. You want to learn. You want to gain as much knowledge as possible, and you want to fend off anybody who's trying to mess with you because you want to be the most powerful, most independent uh, deity of them all in this cosmic, strange universe of endogenesis. Overall, I really like the game. I'm going to give this my seal of approval, minus a couple of the things uh, which would be the losing a turn thing, which kind of bugs me. But I don't think, like, I don't know of a better way you can do it. Um, and the fact that I want to see player boards. I think it'd be a lot nicer to include like these spots to put down the cards, as well as the ultimate abilities, as well as your uh, maybe a power tracker that signifies the uh, power that you're saving to use on your turn. I think that's really relevant. But overall, excellent game. Definitely check it out on Kickstarter in the description below. Endogenesis. Hi right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, make sure that's video videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all helps. We do greatly appreciate it. Subscribe. Do it. Are you? You're not doing it, are you? Do it. Oh, you already did. Thank you. I appreciate that. As well as checking out Endogenesis down below in the description. If you feel like a cosmic, competitive, uh, knowledge-seeking entity game, then this one might be the right one for you. You can also go ahead and check us out at unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter, lists, and more. We'll give away tons of games as well as checking out our friends, everythingboardgames.com, the giveaway geek, and show me how to win. Some great sites uh, here on YouTube as well as on the web. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to creating the most powerful, independent being in the cosmos with you next time.